Hey guys, welcome to my channel. If you are new to the channel, please become a part of the family by hitting that subscribe button. Make sure you hit the like and comment. If you are a returning subscriber, welcome back. Hey guys, so we're going to be talking about the Idaho 4 this evening. This is a horrific, very sad and close to my heart um, story about four college students, young adults who lost their lives on November the 13th in the wee hours of the morning for the longest. No one knew why or who. Now, we still don't know why, but allegedly we do know now. Who. I've been under the weather and I've been dying to get myself together so that I could come forth and put together a little bit of everything that I have gathered personally. Um, there has been a lot of speculation out there. People have come from left and right with all types of scenarios and suspects and reasons that it happened. And we still don't know very much. We don't know if there was a connection between the victims and the suspect. Now, allegedly, Brian Koberger is the person who did all of this damage. Um, but there are a lot of holes in this story. And so I have questions, and I'm sure some of you guys do too. But what I want to do is to walk you back to the very beginning because I do believe that in the very beginning when everything was coming out I believe there was some loose lips and I believe a lot of that information was factual now this is all my opinion most of this is going to be alleged and some of it is just my speculation however a lot of this information is also factual. Um, I'm going to be also dropping the, um, or referencing, shall I say, where I got certain information from. You guys can go and check it out yourself if you want. Do your own due diligence. But I can um, only give you my my perspective of what happened and... Um, what's currently going on because the police, they're very tight-lipped right now. They're not telling us much. Um, they have a gag order on all of the people involved, basically. Um, so not a lot is coming out. Everybody's kind of speculating and coming up with their own theories of what's going on and what happened. And um, it's a catch-22 because a lot of the information is very helpful, but a lot of it is um, not very helpful at all. So I am going to start from the beginning and kind of skim through and kind of give my opinion on what I, I think happened based on what we know so far. So guys, we all know that in the wee hours of the morning on November the 13th, these four had just returned home from a night of partying, drinking, and just having a good time overall with their friends. But once inside this house, in their beds, in their bedrooms, something horrible happened. Now, there's also two other roommates that I mentioned before who were also in this house. Now, early on, when the crime first occurred, we were under the impression that both of these roommates, and I'm just going to call their names, Bethany Funk and Dylan Mortensen, were on the first floor together in the same room. And this information came directly from a presser that the Moscow Police Department held. Now, I can't remember which one of the two said it, but it was the captain or the police, one of those stated that they were downstairs in the room together, okay, on the first floor is what they said. Okay, we later found out that Dylan Mortensen, one of the roommates, had been asleep on the second floor, which is the same floor that Ethan Chafin and Zana Cornoto, who are or were a couple, were also sleeping. Now, this house is made very funky on the inside, but not so funky that you can't hear four people getting brutally stabbed to death. 
because from what the coroner said early on is that it was a very sad scene and it was um, very bloody. Okay, every time that someone is asked about the crime scene, they always have one thing in common that they say, and that is that it was very bloody. I wanted to address the blood on the outside of the house, and I will be showing a picture of that or what's allegedly blood, because in my opinion, I really don't think that that's blood. I don't think it's ever been confirmed, and I have never seen any type of picture with a um, crime tag. Usually when there is, um, or evidence tag, if there's evidence, they usually have a tag by that specific item or um, whatever it is that is a part of their investigation. So that being said, what we know so far is that the killer entered on the second floor, the sliding doors, that back patio door, and he went upstairs and locked the dog in the room, I guess, because in my opinion, in the probable cause statement where they say that let me pedal back. I'm getting ahead of myself. <laughs> um, there's just so much. But the murderer entered the sliding doors. He went upstairs. He went into Maddie's room where her and Kaylee were together in the same bed. And he murdered them. Then he went downstairs and he went past Dylan's room, which is right at the bottom of the steps. He went into Xana and Ethan's room and then murdered them. Okay, so this was all the information that we had up front. So we were like, what? This makes no sense. There's some missing pieces here. This, there's, there's no way. Now, all of this is supposed to take place in about 12 to 15 minutes, I think. Something like that. However... It's not that I don't think that it could take place in a quick time. It doesn't take a lot of time to, you know, stab someone with a K-bar knife or slash them up. These young ladies were very small. Um, they all were maybe about 5'4", 5'2", 100 pounds, 110 pounds. I mean, and we're talking about a grown man who is, you know, who has wrestled and um yeah a man against a woman it's 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 just yeah no brainer now he may have had a fight and i think that he did have a good fight with ethan but we'll get to that a little bit later down the line so like i said we only had bits and pieces of what went on there the kicker was all of this took place about 4 a.m in the morning but the cops weren't called until 11:58, i believe the next day so right before noon and that totally made no sense and everybody was so frustrated like what is happening because <laughs> what what's happening here you mean to tell me that these two roommates are on the first floor now remember this is what we were thinking they're on the first floor they didn't hear anything what is happening well when the affidavit came out and it was revealed that Dylan Mortensen was on that second floor, people went ballistic. Okay, because now we're like, wait a minute. Someone was on the same floor where two of the victims were stabbed to death? This makes no sense. So everyone was trying to figure out why did she not call? It's just so weird. Like, how does anyone wake up, come out of the room three times, not once, not twice, but three times, open their door, and don't have a clue of what's going on? I'm baffled. It just makes no sense. So everyone was kind of saying, you know, she's a young girl. She probably was drinking. Yeah. I, I would agree with both of those. But what I think is nobody in their right mind 
after seeing someone, first of all, hearing everything that you heard, Dylan, and then seeing this person in a mask, bushy eyebrows, if you could see that much, all black, running out of your back door, you go back and you close the door and retreat for about eight hours. It just makes no sense. Where is your phone? One thing is 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 for sure, young people do not ever have their phone far away from them. So I'm sure if you're in your room, your phone is there. I'm sure it's charged. You guys are on social media all the time. And that is shown in your, um, well, it was shown before they closed off their pages on your Instagram and your Facebooks and all of that stuff. Always on social media. So where was your phone is what I want to know, Dylan. Now, I want you to pay close attention to this parking lot. If you take away the police vehicle, there are five vehicles there. Now, tell me, who in their right mind would choose this house to go into and risk the confrontation with everybody inside? A couple of things came out, and it really just made the story that much more complicated. Because now we know that... There's a suspect, Brian Kohlberger. It wasn't a 2011 Hyundai Elantra that they were looking for. Brian Kohlberger drove a 2015 Hyundai Elantra. And they knew this all the time, supposedly, because in the probable cause affidavit, they have him on multiple cameras. The camera from Linda Lane caught him. The camera from 1112. King Road caught him making that what was it that um <laughs> that turn that he made the three point turn he also like I said was caught at the top of that dead end because that's a dead end if you continue straight forward on King Road it takes you all the way up by what is that 500 and that's where Unit 52 is, where he turned around. But there was a camera on a building on Linda Lane. And that is the camera that caught him, making that U-turn to go back down and um, park. Okay. So, do I believe one person can take the lives of four people who are inebriated and half asleep? Yes, I do. And I think that that can be done very quickly. I mean, knowing what we know about the weapon that he used, and they, a couple of them were half asleep. They didn't know what was going on. And those young ladies are very small. Can you just imagine being drunk um, and trying to fight off a killer? Like, no, that's not going to happen. And as far as their injuries, we don't know what to believe because the coroner originally said that they were all stabbed in their upper torso. We now know that, or allegedly, oh wow, it's been said that Ethan's throat was slashed. It's been said that Kaylee, Con Kaylee Gonsalves's injuries were worse than Maddie's. So what is happening here? What is going on? Also, the conflicting um, information. So in the probable cause, one of the officers also said that he walked up the stairs and from the staircase, he looked down the hall and he could see a body that he later came to realize was Xana's. But in this new information from Ashley Banfield, they're saying that Ethan was laying in the door, was murdered in the doorway. It, he, and it's just very conflicting because what happened? In my opinion, I believe something happened in the kitchen. I don't know what, but I believe something happened in that kitchen. Because I do have a picture and I'm going to try my best to insert it. I have so many pictures and videos of this um, this crime that it's kind of hard to pick and choose what to put in. But this is very important because there is a picture of, I believe it's the captain. 
and he is at the back sliding door and he's looking in that kitchen like what happened here and he's standing outside just kind of peeping around like before he goes in so I think that that is very telling I really do also in the probable cause affidavit it is said that Dylan Mortensen heard either Zana or Kaylee say someone's here first of all if you see someone in your house or you're going to yell and scream, you're not going to be like, someone's here. I mean, I wouldn't. What I think happened is when the DoorDash guy came to the door downstairs, I think Bethany Funk yelled upstairs and said, someone's here to let them know that someone was at the door, basically. That's just my opinion. Just like I think, and this is just my opinion, Dylan said she heard Kaylee upstairs playing with her dog, Murphy. I believe that it was Brian Koberger putting the dog away, closing the door. I believe that he went in Kaylee's room first and realized that she was not in there because there was a bunch of boxes in Kaylee's room. I believe that that dog was in there laying down. Because he was used to sleeping in that room with her. And that was his comfort zone. She probably just ran in the room and laid down with Maddie. Because Maddie was pretty um, pretty lit, you know, that night. So she probably just ran in there. They having a girl's kiki or whatever and just fell asleep. Then he commenced to going in that room with them and doing what he did. And I don't believe he left his knife sheath on purpose. If this man wanted to get caught, there were so many other ways to get caught. Okay. I think that in the heat of what was going on, that it fell off. It fell. He didn't know what was going on because his adrenaline was pumping and he had to go. And I believe that he was going to go. I believe that when he hit those stairs, he was going to go. But boy, was he surprised when he saw Ethan. Now he had to kill Ethan. And Xana was in that bedroom crying and that's why he said I'm gonna help you Mm -hmm. she ran back into that bedroom because she came out and seen what was happening and Dylan could hear that because they were close they were in close proximity to her maybe in the living room who knows not exactly sure what happened None of us are. It's all speculation, but that makes more sense. Also, in it was said that when the um, first responders showed up, that the smell of blood was so prominent that it was just overwhelming. So how are you guys sitting in this house and not knowing that for eight hours for and not knowing that anything had taken place? And what happened? Did Bethany Funk come upstairs and notice everything was going on? Did Dylan Mortensen come out finally and realize things was happening? I mean, what was going on here? I'm just going to, I mean, we got a long time before Brian goes to court. We got until, I think, June or June or July, I believe, somewhere. It's a long time, but it will it'll go quick I'm sure we're going to find out lots more information little drips here and there Um, the attorney for the Gonsalves family he is fighting his ass off he wants this gag order lifted and so do I because I think it's totally unfair not to let the family at least speak out and address all of these rumors and kind of I mean it's their it's their right I understand that it could um mess up the case but if you got the person that allegedly did the crime what's the problem I just don't understand why are you so secretive you got a thousand and one pages and of the affidavit and you only gave us like was it 12 11 or 12 and you totally redacted um two of those pages I do excuse me I do remember 
believe that those pages that were redacted, I do believe that the pages that were redacted are in regards to Ethan's wounds. So Ethan played sports. He was very strong. He was tall. Um, and so I do believe that he and Xana was probably fighting. Xana was fighting her ass off also because uh, from what I understand from the Banfield um, segment that I saw last night, she was grabbing that knife and her fingers were almost severed. Because she was trying to fight back. She was a tough cookie. So, you know, I'm just hoping for justice for this family. I am hoping for peace and solace. I know that this is tough, you know. And people are coming all out of the woodworks from left, right, north, south with their own um, perspectives, myself included. But um, we're genuinely... I can say I am genuinely just um, invested in this and concerned. And it just kills my heart to know that this happened to these young people. Like, very um, heart-wrenching. Now, I don't know if you guys can remember early on when Steve Gonzalez was making his rounds. He was letting out a lot of information. And I do believe that that is one of the reasons that they have put a gag on things. He was telling too much, but once they had a suspect, he did mention that he believed that there was a connection between his daughter, Kaylee Gonzalez, and the murderer. He said he wasn't ready to talk about that as of yet, so what does that mean? I was also really, really concerned with seeing the different people in and out of this location where the crime happened, the crime scene. You had the Moscow Movers. The chief, he took it upon himself to drive a U-Haul, go inside, pack up some things, and deliver them to the family, I guess. Or deliver them to a location where the family could access them. Then you had the moving company who showed up. And they had started the process of getting ready to go inside this place and start cleaning they got a court order to cease the process, and that's what happened. <laughs> so for me, these two roommates, you guys have to have saw or heard more than what we know about. And I'm sure because, again, there's over a thousand pages of the probable cause affidavit. We've only seen a small, small portion, but these two young ladies allegedly called over other students who also entered the crime scene. So we don't know whose DNA, whose fingerprints, whose hair is in this location. And to me, that is just, that is just atrocious. Now, before I sign off, there's one more thing that I wanted to address. And that is the camera that picked up the crying sounds and the thud, and the dog barking. A lot of people are thinking that that is the camera on the front side of 1112 King Road. But in my opinion, if I'm correct, there was a second camera at the rear. If you really think about it, the affidavit says that it's 50 from... I'm sorry, 50 feet from Xana's bedroom. That would be closer to the rear of 1112 King Road. I don't think that that camera on the front, the same camera that picked up him doing the U-turns, the three-point turn, I don't think that picked up those vocals eyes and dog barks. I really just don't. It's too far. Um, it's just too far away. Doesn't make sense. So for me, it has to make sense. And I do believe in the beginning when they were going in and out of that 
place, the crime scene, I believe I saw a camera at the back of 1112. So I'll have to go back and take a look at the footage. I will be doing an update, so I'll make sure if I can come across that footage, I will insert that. But I did want to go ahead and address that. With that being said, thank you guys so much for spending your time with me. Again, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe to this channel. Have a great evening.